Russia may withdraw its troops from Ukraine by September this year. UN General Assembly President Denis Francis expressed hope that Russia will decide to withdraw its troops from Ukraine by September this year. We hope that the Russian authorities will decide to withdraw their troops from Ukraine by September this year or sooner, but based on what we have seen, there is no guarantee that this will happen. This will remain a priority issue. Francis said. Earlier, Russian President Vladimir Putin, during a meeting with the leadership of the Russian Foreign Ministry, named the conditions for negotiations on the settlement of the Ukrainian conflict. According to him, Ukraine must completely withdraw its troops from the territory of the Donetsk and Lugansk, as well as the Zaporizhia and Kherson regions, after which the Russian side will be ready to begin negotiations. In addition, Ukraine must officially notify about the abandonment of plans to join NATO. Moscow needs neutral and non-nuclear status of Kyiv, as well as its denazification and demilitarization. At the same time, we are talking about a complete end to the conflict, not about its freezing. The US-based Institute for the Study of War reported that Vladimir Putin has explicitly rejected Russian participation in meaningful ceasefire negotiations for Ukraine, instead demanding Ukraine's irreversible demilitarization as a precondition. According to the ISW, this stance effectively calls for Ukraine's surrender before any ceasefire agreement can be reached. At the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Astana, Kazakhstan, Putin commented on the prospects of a negotiated ceasefire in Ukraine. The ISW notes that instead of his typical feigned interest in such negotiations, Putin outright rejected any ceasefire negotiation process. The report highlights that Putin has dismissed all potential mediators for an agreement between Ukraine and Russia, including Western parties he had previously portrayed as his envisioned negotiating partners. Putin's primary demand, as reported by the ISW, is Ukraine's demilitarization as a prerequisite for any ceasefire agreement. The Russian president insists that these measures must be irreversible, arguing that Russia cannot allow the Ukrainian military to use a ceasefire to reconstitute its forces. The report suggests that Putin's rejection of any ceasefire agreement short of Ukrainian capitulation indicates his confidence in Russia's ability to achieve victory through continued advances in Ukraine, outlasting Western support and winning a war of attrition against Ukrainian forces. Russian troops surrendering to Ukrainians, soldiers ignore orders of commanders. New evidence has emerged that Russian troops are surrendering rather than obeying the cannon fodder orders of Vladimir Putin's commanders, according to the Mirror tabloid. According to the publication, a picture shows Russian soldiers stripped to their underwear, blindfolded and with their hands bound near Ocheretino in the Donetsk region. Ukrainian journalist Denis Kazansky reported, a group of invaders refused to die in one of these cannon fodder assaults and surrendered. The Mirror says that Russian soldiers have started a new wave of protest videos to Putin over commanders insisting on throwing injured men back into fresh assaults despite heavy losses. Two brothers, Evgeny and Igor Valetov, told Putin they were ordered to make a fresh attack on Vovchansk despite being wounded. Everyone got wounded. Someone ran away. Evgeny told the president in a video message, I don't know their fate. Perhaps wounded, perhaps killed. My brother and I were wounded. He pleaded, we managed to give ourselves first aid and get out into the woods. The commander says that tomorrow we must go again and storm Vovchansk. But in what condition are we going to go? Everything hurts. We are all wounded and we just don't have any strength. I appeal to the military prosecutor's office, to the president of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin. Why send such people, all wounded and exhausted, into battle? It's just to send them to their deaths. The mirror says that footage of mutilated soldiers sent back to battle was too much for prominent pro-war blogger Anastasia Kashevarova. I can't watch our men die on crutches and remain silent, she said. The Ukrainians would enjoy the images of Putin sending cripples into battle, she made clear. She demanded men on crutches and plastered limbs. What will they do on the front line? She blamed Russian commanders for sending back the troops against doctors' advice. The walking wounded from the 26th Armored Regiment, 47th Division, pleaded. More than 50 of us arrived from hospitals, the remnants of three companies. Our command is sending us in groups to combat missions. But everyone here requires surgery and hospital treatment. The documents we were given in the hospitals clearly state 
that we should be given leave due to wounds. We need further treatment and rehabilitation. None of this is fulfilled. On the contrary, wounded servicemen are sent on combat missions.